Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Do you guys remember back in the day when I used to do challenge videos with smaller YouTube channels? Well, it's happened again. I've been challenged by RD Custom Diecast. Rodney was nice enough to include a couple of these 83 Silverado castings. However, I'm gonna cheat today and I'm gonna switch over to an M2 just because it's gonna suit the needs for my, uh, my truck a little bit better. So I think he's gonna probably be using one of these, but uh, well, you know, the Hot Wheels one here is pretty darn low and my truck was, uh, I don't know, she was a factory ride height from the mullet generation. I want to say my truck was probably built in the late 90s, so I want to show you guys what I mean. So we're going to back burner this Silverado. And we're going to use this little M2 that was sent in by my buddy Boo. Today's journey begins, I like to say, in the early 2000s. Just getting into buying vehicles, working on stuff, slowly accumulating some tools. Up here in Canada, we had this popular newspaper that was basically just for classifieds and it was called The Bargain Finder. So I was going through The Bargain Finder this one day and I found this sweet little 86 short box and I had to go check it out. So when I showed up to look at this truck, it was sitting in the backyard of this person's house and it was kind of, I don't know, it was kind of struck me as odd. I didn't really understand why, but I figured out later on. So whatever, I looked at this truck and it had a visor. It had a Razorback, Razorback, Razorback. You know those plastic little kind of like a fairing that mulletizes your pickup trucks? I think they were called Razorback. Anyways, they had shaved door handles, which was crazy to me. I was like, oh man, this thing's custom. At this time in my life, I was checking out a lot of sport truck magazine and I was super into, you know, sport trucks and stuff. So here I was buying this 86 Chevy short box and I thought, you know, this is it. This is going to be my sport truck. This thing was like rust free. A lot of the work was already done. I was super pumped. So I bought this truck and in Alberta, where I live, up in the Berta country. Here we have to have our vehicles inspected if they are over, I think, 12 years old. So I would have to taken the truck in to get an inspection before insurance. The registry office came back and told me that the truck has a write-off title or the truck was previously written off. So kind of a kind of a dick move by those people selling the truck. They sold me a truck that was technically written off even though it didn't look like it. So I thought that was the truck I was going to build today. I haven't really thought about it in a long time and I didn't own it for very long. Being a young man, luckily I, I was able to convince myself not to have a money pit at that time in life. So I actually sold it to a friend of mine. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, this truck had a Razorback. Ra Razorback? Razorback. Typically when I'm going to build something like that, usually I would try to make one out of paper first. So that's what I did. I made a little jig out of paper here. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And then I was able to get some decent measurements. But uh, initially, once I had the basics figured out, I thought, uh, you know, maybe we'll just 3D print this. And then I was like, well, heck, why don't we see if I could build one with styrene first. And um, I was kind of just working off camera on it. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, I had a little racer bag built. So I was like, oh, okay. Forget 3D printing. So here's the completed piece in styrene. Hmm. I want to rock. Rock. And I was so happy with my little piece here that I was like, oh, well, why don't we try build the... Why don't we try build the visor too? So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue these on right now. This is my visor, also built from styrene. It's gonna just kinda sit on here. Once she's glued on, I should be able to shape it a little bit better, but that's, uh, that's the gist of it. All right, that's looking not bad, not too bad. I'm kinda looking forward to getting this thing in primer and having a look at everything. Where'd my little visor go? Wow, something like that. Pimp, now that she's on there roughly, I can really take the file and try to blend her back into the truck a little bit, but <laughs> hell yeah, that's what we're going for. All right, a little bit of work. She's starting to fit pretty good. Kind of working on these front angles a little bit. I'm pretty sure these came to somewhat of a point. I think the one on my Tahoe's got a point. 
All right, now that we got our mullet kit kind of loosely installed, I think I'm gonna move on to our roll pan here. While our gloves are dirty, I'll mix up a little bit of putty and we're gonna just fill that up. I'm gonna go ahead and start roughing in this roll pan with a file, pick one that's got a rounded edge. Let's see if we can't just here's a question, are roll pans cool anymore? Give that roll pan just that little bit of rounded edge. Beautiful man, that's a nice looking roll pan. Cool, I think the majority of my body work is done here. I gotta just do some last minute sanding. And then I think we can head over to the spray booth and throw a paint job on this thing. My truck back in the day here was uh, kind of like a red wine color. So I think I'm gonna be able to use this magenta and just start layering up coats and eventually I'm gonna get to the color I want. So it might take seven or eight coats. It might take two or three, but uh, We'll get in the spray booth and we'll try it out and I'm pretty sure this magenta is going to get us where we need to be. So I'm going to give this one last once over and then I'm going to degrease it and I'll meet you guys in the spray booth. Okay. You know, I'm gonna tell you, this looks surprisingly realistic. Maybe not so much with the wicked candy paint that we're about to experience, but, um, man, that's her. It's darn near. Any of my friends from back in the day watching would probably know exactly which truck this is. You guys remember the time when I was fresh out of high school and got scammed by some gypsies? So I was stuck with a written off pickup truck at an age when I couldn't afford to fix it, you know?
Not too much of this interior screams Chevy to me, but check it out. Go switches on the console for the airbags. <laughs> it's not bad. My truck was an automatic, so this one being a standard would be awesome, but not realistic. So I'm feeling that. That's looking pretty good. Just a few things left here before I do an assembly. I got some slotted mags, but you can't really see the slots very well. So I'm going to darken them up with a little bit of paint or should I use a wash again? Here's a look at the one that got away, my 86 Chevy. I think she's looking pretty darn good. I know you guys didn't get a chance to see the real truck, but this is pretty darn close. Minus like the epic candy paint job. It was more of just a, a regular burgundy paint job. It was still pretty nice, but you know, didn't have that extra pizzazz. Got that red on red with the visor. <laughs> I think she turned out pretty sweet. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and be sure to go check out Rodney's channel. I already had a look at his truck. I'm gonna say it's pretty impressive considering he's got a blower and NOS and like white letter wheels, you know. You guys should check it out. So be sure to go over there, say hello in the comments, let them know where you guys came from. Make sure you leave a like to support the channel, say hello in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now, take care. Hey, doll.